Hi, I'm Carol Tesley, and this is Kim Austin, and we are ambassadors with Fantasy RV Tours, and we are both getting ready to lead trips down to Baja, Mexico, two different groups, and we thought we'd share some tips with you about traveling down into Baja. So um, this will be like our fourth time down to Baja, and you've been it's down our through third time, ten yeah. times, so we're all experienced in doing this kind of thing. And so, love it. It's wonderful. Isn't it? It's yes, a, it's a great fun. experience. But something that's unique, um, we find that um, it's a lot easier or safer, I guess. Um, our groups feel more comfortable if we travel in a group rather than going all by yourself. Um, I think there's a little bit more secure feeling when you travel with friends uh, down there rather than uh, just independent. So, um, And you feel very safe down there. The Mexican people are wonderful. They, they love are. having us there. Yes. And it's really good for them for us to be there. Right. They do enjoy us. Some of the things that are different about going down into Baja that you have to be aware of is um, everybody has a different sensitivity to the water in Baja. So we kind of err on the side of caution and uh, we live off our fresh water tank, um, fill up before we cross the border and try to conserve our water as much as possible. Um, but there are purification areas or stations where you can purchase water and refill your tanks or if you don't if you bring drinking water which is what we do yes um, we fill our tank with Mexican water but we sanitize it we don't use it for drinking we can use it for washing you know washing dishes cooking, um, cooking yep. all that kind of stuff so and, and we just haven't bring, had a problem ever right yeah. we haven't either and then with the food you want to make sure you check the site going before you go into Mexico to see what you can take in. That's right. The border crossings are always kind of a unique situation. Just like going into Canada, Mexico is the same thing. There's certain foods or things. Number one thing everybody needs to know, do not yes. take any guns, yep. ammunitions, no CBD products. Just don't bring any. It just causes problems. Doesn't matter who you are. Doesn't matter about, oh, I think I have a permit and all that. It doesn't work that way. <laughs> Right. It's yes. Just, and going through the border crossing, at least when we go through Takati, it seems like it's very easy because they're yeah. not that busy. Correct. It's easy. Much easier Takati than going through like Tijuana or something where it's just the traffic is busy and so forth. So Takati is a lot easier. Um, the roads in the upper part, uh, the first part where we get to in uh, Baja Norte, uh, the roads are pretty good. I mean, they're yes, almost they like are. being in the United States, you know, Part of it's freeway, that kind of thing. But the further south we go, it, it's a little bit more challenging. You just have to go <laughs> slow. I mean, don't go too fast That's and you right. just stay behind in your group and follow right. along and you're taken care of. Right. The roads get narrower and narrower is what happens. So, yep. um, and some areas don't have much of a shoulder. So we just travel very slow uh, and take it easy. And we travel in a group. And so our lead person will tell the people behind to say, there's a semi coming, for example, and so we all pull over and or slow down or actually stop as close as we can to the edge of the road and let the semis go. They're the ones that are still on a schedule. They need to, they're going fast. Right, and they know what they're doing. Yes, I they mean, do. they're very well prepared to pull right. over as far as they can to their And they side. do a good job. So we they let do. them go by, and once we're all past, then we take off and go again. So um, the camping's more rustic. In, yes. Um, the campgrounds are not what you expect here, like what you get in the United States. No, but also when you go on the beach at Bahia, it's absolutely beautiful. That's oh right. Oh my gosh. It's oh. worth the boondocking. Yes, it is. Very much so. <laughs> to do that. So, because there's nothing like camping on the beach. It's it's wonderful. Um, one of the advantages of going with a tour group, for instance, with Fantasy, we get a hotel room. That campground that we stay at is affiliated with a hotel. And so they give us a key to a room and um, our group takes turns checking the key out. They can go up there and shower, get cleaned up and do that every day. And that saves the water usage. Yes. You know? And so, the restaurants are fabulous. Oh, that we aren't go they? To. Yes. The food is great. <laughs> <laughs> it's always wonderful. And that's one of the things. People always bring too much food. Um, that's one of the... Well, and, and when you go back over the border into the U.S., there's so much that you can't, can't take, so you need to check that, too. That's right. So we tell guests, don't bring a lot of food. Um, you're going to eat out restaurants so much because the food is so wonderful. So it's just easier not to bring a whole bunch of food. Um, yeah. And you can buy food there, too. And some of the places, right. there's grocery, grocery stores. Grocery stores you can walk to or, or travel to. Right. Um, and the whales are fabulous. Oh right, my gosh. because we go down to Guerrero Negro, where the whales are, down to the lagoon, and um, yeah. touch them. 
they show off. They yes. come up to the boat. They, they bring show their babies up. It's, it's yeah, well worth it, <laughs> isn't it? Yeah, it's, well worth we've it. We've done it several times, and it's still just exciting as ever uh, to doesn't do it. Doesn't get so. old. No, it doesn't. No. It's it's different each time we go. So it's just wonderful. Um, Mexico's a great way to travel. It um, is. Traveling with a group, like with a tour group with Fantasy, um, we travel differently in Mexico than what we do um, when we're traveling in the States. In yeah. the States, it's more freewheeling. Um, the wagon master will say, that we're gonna leave like at eight in the morning and um, the tail gunner is gonna leave at uh, 10 o'clock and you have a two hour window to leave um, and the tail gunner will still be behind you. But in Mexico, you can still travel that way if you choose to, yeah. but most people say, no, I'm gonna stay with the group. They just feel safer that way. So we'll take off and we actually travel nose to tail and travel down with the group. And so that's why we use radios and tell people when the semi is coming, we pull off together. But if, but if something happens, like you, if you have a flat tire, mm -hmm. the, the tail gunner will stay with you. That's right. You had an instance where you stayed with- We had several. <clears throat> yes. Okay. <laughs> yeah, it just so happened. Right, okay. And every time it worked out and the Mexicans told us that if uh -huh. the Americans can build it, the Mexicans can, can fix, fix it. it. Oh my gosh, that's great. That's it wonderful. Yeah. Yes. No, they were very- they're um, Very helpful. Yes, and they're very creative in how they fix stuff, but they get yeah, you back on the right. road kind of thing. So yeah, mechanical breakdowns and stuff like that. So no, it works out pretty well. And that's the advantage again with a touring with a group we have yep. a tail gunner that's bringing up the rear of the group and will uh, stay behind you in case there's any problems but uh, most of the tours we've been on we've never had any problems so far we've been very lucky so it just depends on everybody's even um, with problems they work out they do it's great they do yeah. well especially when you travel with a group yes you know everybody exactly. pitches in and helps each other right. so it's yeah. really kind of fun so Baja's a great place to go it is it's really worth doing as a group or individually yeah wonderful place to visit Thank you. Thank you.